This is Across the Streams Media Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Front Row Negative, the podcast. This is your host, Aaron. And, uh, well, it's just me. There is no guest today, or this time. Uh, usually, whenever I record these things, I have a guest lined up. We go back and forth. We try to figure out a time to record and talk and just chit-chat and think of a topic and stuff like that. And uh, it's not that easy. Uh, I usually have to bend over backwards to find time to their needs to do it. And uh, you know, in this case, it's not happening. So it's just me. So either I'll have some great content or you'll hear the ramblings of a madman that's getting old. But we are getting into the spooky season, Halloween, one of my favorite holidays. Uh, even though I typically celebrate it all year round with movie watching, um, this is the era whenever people tend to start enjoying scary movies, even though throughout the rest of the year they claim to not like them. Yeah, they're not a fan of them. But this is also the time whenever uh, we have the front row negative horror movie brackets. And we have a contest. Uh, by the time you're listening to this, that bracket should be live on our Facebook it should be posted to our Instagram. So if you hear it, um, go get it, you know, fill it out, turn it in. You can win some prizes. I got some movies, uh, some shirts, um, thinking about maybe giving away a hoodie of your choice from the FRN store, for, which is basically my store, uh, Tea Public or Redbubble. Uh, your choice, your pick, and you win. All you got to do is just fill out the form, send it in, give us a follow and maybe a subscribe or a like or a few other things too. But you get free stuff. And all you have to do is listen to a podcast. Uh, but before that, you have to fill out brackets and turn it in. So with that kind of out of the way, oh, and be sure to listen to, I'll take it back. Be sure to listen to future episodes to see if your picks win. So now with that out of the way, um, so what's been going on with the uh, behind-the-scenes type stuff? Um, pretty much, I know the last episode uh, we had Chris and uh, Nicole on, producer Nicole. Um, they kind of did that because they were excited about the D23 uh, stuff that was coming out. And we talked all about that, what we were excited for, what we were not excited for, what was happening, the announcements from San Diego, all that cool stuff. And since then, I've started watching more shows, more movies, Trying to just get caught up with life, with freelance work, uh, my main job, uh, dad life, husband life, stuff like that. Uh, so basically since then, uh, finished up the show True Detective that I am late to the party on, but it was such a fantastic show. Season one, great, amazing. Like the semi-paranormal element and the semi uh uh, seance devilish overtones to it that really wrapped up well. And plus, Alexandra Daddario was in it. And uh, all I can say is I can see why people uh, like her uh, her skills. Then you had season two, which just to me felt like an additional season to The Wire. Uh, didn't really fit the overtone. I know they're trying to go in their own direction with it, with something else, well, like when I later read into it. But it just it was good, but it just didn't fit into the overtone like of the whole series. Uh, then season three kind of went back to the kind of semi paranormal aspect of it. it. Was you know which was fun. Uh, you know it, it was I, it was enjoyable. And then in season four, which I heard a lot of negative feedback on because it felt like uh, aliens. Or it felt uh, kind of sketchy. I know they had a lot of overtones from the movie The Thing, or John Comp John Carpenter's The Thing, uh, on there with like an Arctic expedition crew, in the middle of a blizzard, things go wrong. Uh, yeah, I, I can see that, but I enjoyed it overall. I mean, Jodie Foster was good, and she kind of pulled it through, so uh, I didn't mind that. 
Uh, I mean, overall, the show was good. Uh, I'm curious if they're going to do a fifth season because I'm hooked on it. Uh, currently, I'm watching, uh, what's it called, Bite Size Halloween. I think it's on Hulu. It's like three to like seven minute little shorts of anthology, like kind of creepypasta s stuff, which is amazing. Uh, the, the creative and the talent of some of these people who make these shorts are just out of the world. You know, it's, it's just great. Uh, for game wise, still playing Halo. Uh, whenever I get a chance, I try to get those weekly challenges late at night uh, if I'm not working on freelance work. Uh, and then lately, Call of Duty, they wrote me back in with the Michael Myers and the Sam skins and the uh, other Halloween theme skins. Uh, they kind of got me back in. Uh, I almost got it a few months ago when they had the Gundam skin and the um, and the uh, what was it? the Godzilla and Kong or not Godzilla? It was a uh, Scar King and Shimu and yeah, and Godzilla skins. That kind of almost got me back into it, but I was like holding off. Didn't want to put the extra money because you have to buy the game and then buy the content. Uh, and I didn't want to th- throw that down, but. If you know me and you've been listening to the podcast, you know that I'm a big fan of uh, the movie Trick or Treat. And when they announced Sam, I'm like, okay, we got my money. I'm sold on it. So uh, I got it. Uh, I've been trying to play that, trying to squat up, but uh, I am not that good at Call of Duty. Ooh, as I take a drink from my beer. Sorry about the pause. But yeah, I'm not that good at Call of Duty. I can admit that. I'm better at Halo with, uh, I guess, the, the controls. With Call of Duty, it's... Uh, I have issues with, I guess, the, the, the aiming. I mean, I'm quick enough, uh, but the aiming is what kind of gets me sometimes. Uh, and I can admit that. I can definitely admit that. Uh, so uh, if you see me on Call of Duty, my gamer tag is the Suicide Fox with two X's and just, uh, yeah... Uh, hit me up if you see me on. Uh, we, we'll squat up. I know a friend of the show, Clay, is on there, and also a friend of the show, Jeremy, and also a member of FRN, uh, Jeremy Clinton, is on there. So uh, uh, find us, and we'll squat up, and we'll uh, go kill zombies or, or miraculously die or heroically die in the game uh, as we uh, as they carry me to uh, a third-place victory. But, uh, yeah, there's that. And then also I've uh, been reading a lot, too. Uh, been hitting up the half price books and been reading. I uh, started reading uh, the alien novelizations because I, I've always been had interest in the books versus the movies, how they're different, how they're similar, what they kept, what they took out, stuff like that. And I read the first alien novelization, and the book is good. Um, they did leave out a few scenes from the book that were in the movie, and they changed things around, like the engineer or the uh, yeah the engineer that's in the the seat. Uh, wasn't in the book. It wasn't in the book. Uh, but they added it to the movie, which I think is okay. But at the same time, there was a scene in the book where the xenomorph, the alien, lost an arm through a sliding door uh, that wasn't in the movie. That I think should that could have been, which would have added more suspense to the twist of uh, uh, Ash's, is that, Ash's uh, turning on the, the crew. Because early in the movie you find out that Ash is bad, but in the book, you find out until later on whenever Ripley uh, kind of uh, semi-hacks into the computer and takes over after the captain is uh, uh, taken out. So the book is really good. Uh, They don't describe the alien at all except for being tall and black and shiny. So what you see the Xenomorph now was a movie interpretation of very little uh, characteristics and description, which I think was really well done. Currently in the middle of the book, Aliens, and already I'm like, like maybe a little over a quarter of the way through, and it's like Ripley talking with the Marines about who they are and what they are and her distrust of Bishop. Uh, really cool. So yeah, I've been reading that before I jump into uh, other horror movie book novelizations before I get into uh, holiday horror books, which I enjoy reading. I know last year I got the... Um, the book for a, uh, or the novelization for a Silent Night, Deadly Night, and I haven't read it yet. Uh, but I just because I had other books on my shelf to read, but I plan to read that one this year to kind of get into that uh, the holiday mood. Uh, you know, pumpkin spice, uh, everything nice, and uh, 
horror books to make it thrice. I don't know. Just kind of rhyming on things. Uh, but yeah, uh, so that's kind of what's been going on with uh, the life. Uh, just watching a lot of movies. Uh, I do have to recommend some movies though uh, that you're gonna that are going to be on the brackets and some that are not going to be on the brackets to check out. So if the bracket list is up, give those movies a watch if you haven't watched them in a while or you've never discovered them. Um, the Deep House, really good movie. Uh, I really like that found footage movie. I thought it was very well done. Uh, kind of wish uh, it got more of a of a promotion or a marketing done. So hopefully word of mouth will make that movie uh, travel somewhere. Uh, the WNUF Halloween special and it is a great movie. I know my only disapproval of the movie is the amount of commercials that are played through it that are added to the look and feel of an old VHS found tape. Uh, I mean, VHS recorded uh, tape. But other than that, I think the movie is amazing. Uh, very well done. Very well scripted out. Uh, what else? WNUF. Late Night of the Devil is really good. Uh, I really enjoyed that one. Uh, I'm always going to give props to, the, to Death Stream that's on uh, Shudder. That was a fun movie. Uh, I think there's one called The Beach House. That one was really good too. With like a kind of like a, a mix of Taking of Deborah Logan and The Visit to a degree, but then you're like twisted around into like a full on invasion. So it's, it's something different that, uh, I think you'll enjoy if you want to check it out. Uh, so that's movies, that's books, that's gaming. Uh, think of anything else. Oh, gaming wise. Yeah. I've kind of also semi jumped back into playing, uh, Shredder's Revenge because they announced Mondo Gecko and Mona Lisa. And I'm a huge Mondo Gecko fan, a uh, really big Mondo Gecko fan. So uh, that was pretty cool to uh, see that announced. So I'll probably be picking that up again uh, more, uh, just just to, so I can play as Mondo uh, and enjoy that. But uh, with that being said, uh, tune in for our Halloween bracket specials. And uh, before that, you know, fill out the brackets, turn them into me, and uh, have a chance to win. I mean. It's a free entry. It takes you probably less than five minutes to pick your favorites, write your name on it, and turn them in. I mean, if you're sitting at home, if you're sitting on the toilet doing nothing but playing Snake, well, 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 bad terminology. If you're playing Candy Crush on the toilet, you can pop open the brackets, use your phone, knock those brackets out, send them in. Win some prizes that I will ship to you, that you will get. You get to pick a shirt or a hoodie, depending on how many people enter. Uh, so far, I have had two people enter. So uh, if I get up to six people, I'll throw in the hoodie. Uh, I'll make the hoodie be a prize. So uh, yeah, fill it out, send it in, and you know, win some stuff. Uh, with me kind of taking over solo, there will be some other things that will be happening down the line with scheduling. Uh, but as of right now, yeah, the guest was trying. It was really hard to get for this week, and we needed content. And I just decided to pick up the pick up uh, an episode to just kind of ramble on for a while. Uh, honestly, I don't know how Brady does it for forty five minutes because I'm barely hitting what 15, 13, 15 minutes, and I'm struggling. Uh, so props to Brady on uh, the GM Man show. Uh, also, go give his show a listen to. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And the guests that we'll have for Halloween brackets, we'll have some podcaster friends of mine, uh, people who run conventions and just overall good people. So tune in and, uh, listen when, if you've entered the brackets and just enjoy the content. So until next time, you know, always unfollow, never unfriend, don't be a pink bearded clown and just, you know, be cool with everyone. But also fuck ponchos because save your stomach. So and so find us on uh, iTunes, Clitcher, Stitcher, not Clitcher, Stitcher, uh, all the for, all the podcasting formats. We have shirts and merch. Go to T Public or Redbubble and just type in Front Row Negative or Awesome AG Designs. Take you to the same place. Uh, buy a shirt. Give us a support. Subscribe to our uh, podcast formats. Uh, give us likes, comments, all that cool stuff. 
So uh, I say us, but it's really just me. So, uh, yeah, until next time, uh, have a good day, night, morning, whenever you're listening to this. Later. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, check out CrossTheStreamsMedia.com to hear more episodes of this podcast and the other shows on the Cross the Streams Network. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you download your favorite shows. Visit CrossTheStreamsMedia.com for more information. See you next time. has been a Cross the Streams media podcast.